Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. It's so good to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us. And you're not going to be disappointed because the Word is good. Yes. And we've been having good eats around this Word on yes. these past several episodes. If you were not able to join us for the previous episodes in this series, go back and watch them because we're saying so many things that we don't have time to repeat. Right. But we don't want you to miss out on it. Right. So we've been, we've been having as a jumping off place two places, really, something Brother Copeland said, then something in the book of Acts. And so quoting again what Brother Copeland has told us so faithfully so many times is the will of God is your wealthy place. Nice. There is, yes. that is so, so good. Yes. And um, when he talks about wealthy place, it would certainly include prosperity, but it's not limited to that arena. Yeah. That in the will of God, every arena of our life is enriched. Yes. 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 That means if it's enriched, it's not falling behind. Right. It's, there's no struggle in, that, in the different arenas of our life because the will of God nourishes our life. <laughs> and so um, he makes that wonderful statement, the will of God is your wealthy place. And know this, that the different arenas of our life abound in the will of God. Yes. That our health will abound yes. when we're in the will of God. Our faith will abound. Yes. Um, our prosperity will abound, our joy, yes. our peace, the wisdom of God will abound when we're, uh, when we're conducting life mm -hmm. from the center of what God has planned for us. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we're also looking at a passage found in Acts chapter 20, and we're starting in verse 22. This is Paul talking, and he's giving us some insights mm -hmm. of how he has uh, arrived at the place he was at in his life then and how he, can, how he expected to finish the plan of God for his life. So Acts chapter 20, verse 22, Paul states this. He says, And now behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy yes. and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So I want you to see here, he's telling those gathered how it is that the steps he takes so that he can finish his course with joy. You know, it's not just about running, but it's about how we run. Yes. Yes. It's not just about finishing, but it's how we finish also. Yes. It matters. And notice he says that our finishing should be with joy. Yes. Well, if our finishing is to be with joy, our running must be with joy. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we should live our daily lives in the, in the joy flow yes. of God. Yes. And he tells us, how can we finish with joy when we're faced with opposition? Well, we've been taking the last, what is it, four or five episodes, mm -hmm. just looking at the first phrase in verse 20. He said, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. What's Jerusalem? Well, for us, Jerusalem is where God told us to be, yes. what God told us to do. Yes. God told him to be in Jerusalem. God told him that's where you're to you're to be journeying is to Jerusalem. And so he said, for me to arrive there, I go bound. Meaning this, uh, he's not using the word bound in the, in the terms we think of like bondage, but bound, he's committed. Yes. 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 He's consecrated. Amen. He has agreed to the plan of God within. He yes. says, I go bound 
in the spirit. The spirit of God has revealed it and his own spirit has agreed to it. Yes. You know, the spirit of God can reveal something to us, but our hearts and our spirits yes. still have to agree to that. Yes. Amen. It's not enough that God planned it. We have to agree to it for it to come to pass. Yes. And so that's what Paul is saying. He said, I committed myself to be where God told me to be. And I know there's going to be opposition. God has warned me. He has informed me. He's forewarned me that there's going to be opposition, but that doesn't, that doesn't move me because I'm committed. I'm bound to fulfill what he has instructed me. So that's our first thing. The first step is whenever we know God's directing us something when he has, because God has a plan for every life. Yes. He's not just talking to ministers. He's talking to everyone who has an, an assignment joined to your life that God has, God has formed a plan for your life. Yes. And uh, the only way to fulfill it is we have to be bound to it. Yes. Meaning we're not entertaining other plans. Right. We're not formulating our own plan. We're bound to his plan. Amen. So that's the number one thing that we've talked about in the last four episodes or so. But now we're going to go to the second thing that Paul stated. He says, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem. Look at this, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. So he doesn't know everything, but look, look at what he does know. Look at verse 23. What is it that he does know? He knows that bonds and afflictions are waiting for him. Yeah. <laughs> That's all he knows. Right. How would you yeah. be willing to go to the next place when the only thing revealed to you is you're going to face persecution. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to face opposition. And he yeah. says, you know something? I bind myself yeah. to what you tell me to do because yeah. in that I'm going to have your strength and I'm going to have your joy. Yes. So the second step to finishing our course with joy and fulfilling the ministry that God has for us. Number one, we're bound to it. We're committed to it. We're consecrated to his plan, not our plan, his plan. And second of all, we're willing to move into that plan, not knowing everything. To move with God, we have to be willing to move into the unknown. And as I said on the last episode, it's not unknown to God. It's unknown to us, yes. but we can be, uh, we can be secure and we can be certain that even though we are moving into the unknown, we're safe because the unknown is known by God yes. 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 and we're following him. Yes. Now, when we're following him in, into the unknown, we better make sure we don't quit following. Yes. <laughs> it's almost like if you go to another country and they give you a guide, that's going to take you out touring that country, mm -hmm. you are perfectly safe in a place you don't know that's right. yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. as long as you stay with the God. Yes. Yes. If you're going to go off and be, you know, be a rebel, uh -huh. be a lone <laughs> ranger, now you might find yourself at risk right. because you're in the yes. unknown without someone who knows. Yes. Yes. But when God leads us into the unknown, he doesn't intend that we're out there without someone who knows. He knows. Right. The yes. spirit of God knows. And so our safety and our security is staying close to our guide, staying close to the one who is leading us. Yes. We don't go halfway and then go rogue. Right. Yes. And go off on our own yes. agenda, our own plan. No, we stay right with him. My husband and I, that when we would travel to other countries, you know, uh, you, you go into a restaurant and you, go, you look at the menu and it means nothing to me. Right. I got no idea what all this alphabet is doing on this, <laughs> on this menu. I've never even seen that combination of letters before, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's written in foreign language. Yeah. And even though a, a, a menu is familiar to you, you can't read anything on it. No. And we have gone so many times into other countries and the pastor, either himself or somebody that assisted him, would be with us. And I tell you what, we stuck to them like glue yes. because if I separate from this, from this God, I don't eat today because right. <laughs> I can't order off of all these alphabet right. here. I don't know what that alphabet's doing. <laughs> right? right. Yes. And if I wanted to eat, I hung on to their every word. They would read the menu to us and describe what those things are. That's the way we are to journey through this country that is not our homeland. We have to follow the guide. And you know what? 
God has given us a God who has already been there. He knows. He knows the mind of God. He knows the plan of God. The Holy Ghost knows the plan of God for our lives. And so he's leading us based on God's genius. So our success is in how closely we follow, especially when we move into the unknown. Amen. Amen. You say, well, I don't move till I know. Well, you're not going to move as far as God intends for you to move then. Just move. And you say, how do we move into the unknown? Because God always gives you the very next step to take. And just move with what you do know. And don't get flustered or occupied with what you don't know. You know, many times the devil will frighten people into doubt, Mm -hmm. into fear, just by saying, you don't know where the money's going to come from for this business venture. No, I don't, but God told me to do it. See, that's what you have to answer. I don't need to know where it's going to come from because the one I'm following knows. When you're going into the unknown, you're not there alone. You're there with the divine genius. You're there with the one who formed the plan for your life. So you are, you are safe in following the Holy Ghost into the unknown. But if you're not willing to go into the unknown, there's, there's features of God's plan that you will not experience as you ought. Amen. Now, go with me to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8. And this is the Amplified Classic Translation. And I want you to see some wording here that will help us. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, it reads, Urged on by faith, Mm -hmm. Abraham, when he was called, obeyed. Mm -hmm. And he went forth to a place Mm -hmm. which he was destined to receive as an inheritance. Mm -hmm. And he went, although he did not know. Mm -hmm. Look at that. He went, although he did not know. Paul was saying that he moved into the unknown. Where did he learn that? Abraham showed him how to do it. He went, although he did not know. And I like the next phrase. He did not know or trouble his mind about where he was to go. Look at this. When it says he did not know and he did not trouble his mind. It's not even, the the devil's not even mentioned. Sometimes we trouble our mind trying to know what God hasn't yet shown. And we're trying to feel it, figure it out, and fill in the blanks. Don't trouble your mind. Uh, You know, there are times um, when I'm preaching and I travel and preach. I preached in our church for 25 years and now I preach primarily on the road. And there are places that sometimes I'll go to a church that I'm to minister and I don't have any sense of which direction to go with a sermon Mm -hmm. because I always check my spirit. I don't just pull one out of the bag Mm -hmm. and just go. I always look to him. What do these people need? What, what purpose did you bring me here for, for them? Mm -hmm. And so I've got to, I lean to him to look, to know what they need. He knows I don't. So I look to his leading many times Sometimes weeks before I go somewhere, he will drop a sermon in my heart and I'll just sit down and write it out because he's giving me what they need. Yes. But sometimes I go, I, he hasn't given me a sermon for this place. I realize this, if he hasn't given it to me, I must already have it. Mm-hmm. I must already have it. So it's okay that if he didn't give me a brand new one, there's something in me that's already there that they need. All I've got to do is follow the spirit and draw out what is already in me that they have, that they have need of. Mm -hmm. Then sometimes uh, I'll go in and I'll have a, I'll have a sense. I'm going to go this way, but I walk in and the anointing in the room, I sense something different. Mm -hmm. And I just go with ever what, it, what anointing is in the room? I don't go with the sermon on the page when there's a different anointing in the room. Right. Amen. I will step into the pulpit many times not knowing, but I go with the first thing that comes to me when I get in the pulpit. Yes. 
My yeah. husband taught me that years ago. He said, when you can't quite sense what God wants for a service, it's not that you're going in unprepared, but you go in yeah. in faith, right. depending on him yeah. who's leading you. Yeah. And he said, when you step into the pulpit and you don't know what direction the, the service is to go, he said, go with the first thing that comes to you when you get to the pulpit. Why? Because when you get to the pulpit is when you need to know. Yeah. I don't need to know back in my hotel room three hours before. I don't need to know two months before. I don't even need to know an hour before. But the moment I hit that pulpit, I need to know. And the moment I need to know, it's always there. Yes. But I trust the one who is leading me to that moment. Yes. You understand? Yes. In your own life, if you say, I'm not sure which direction to go, then evidently you don't need it yet. When you get to the point where you need it, it will come. Yes. Don't try to define what you, what you haven't arrived at yet. Yes. Many people want full explanation of how to walk out, uh, walk out something when they haven't even arrived at the place to walk right. it out yet. Right. God doesn't dump the whole thing into your lap. First of all, it wouldn't be faith, and it's by faith yes. that we please God. But yes. second of all, if he gave us the whole process yes. of something he's directed us to do and he dumped the whole thing in our life, yes. you know what we'd do? We'd sit and handle it. Yes. We'd sit and rework it, yes. throw in our suggestions, yes. throw in our opinions, and muddy the whole yes. thing. Yes. So he tricks us into being effective <laughs> by not telling us the whole thing at once. That's right. He just gives us the next step because he thinks, well, surely they can't mess up the next step. <laughs> Amen. Yes. We're safe in following anywhere he leads. Yes. Now, this is the key. I don't move till I know. Yes. I don't move till I know the next step. Yes. I don't have to know the next 10 steps. Yes. I just have to know the next thing. Yes. I just have to have that clarity. Yes. Amen. Amen. And this is what we see that Abraham did that he went, although he did not know. He didn't know the whole thing. He didn't know every step. Um, every day, Abraham got up and moved with God without a map. God didn't map it out. He told him, leave your kinsman. Leave, your, leave, your, leave the city you were raised in. And he said, uh, and listen, Abraham left a cultured city to go live in tents and follow God. And every day he would get up and God would move him a little further. He didn't know exactly the land. He didn't know exactly how to arrive there, the route God would use to take him there. But every day he'd get up and say, which, which direction today, God? Yes. Yes. That's all you need to know. Yes. Yes. Which way today? Um, and God would direct him. And sometimes he'd stay there for a time. Mm -hmm. He'd stay at a certain place. But he was ready to move with God. Amen. That's what... If you're going to finish the plan God has for your life, you got to be willing to go into what you haven't figured out. Yes. Yes. You had to be willing to move into the unknown. Yes. He didn't trouble his mind. Many people are worried because they've troubled their own mind trying to figure out steps God hasn't defined for them. They've done it themselves. They've done that troubling themselves because they're handling mentally what they need to follow with their faith. Amen. Amen. What, it, what do we know about Abraham in this? He wasn't led by his mind. Right. Yes. He was led by, the, by, by his father who was leading him. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. He was led by God and the faith in his heart that he had in God. When you go not knowing, the faith in God is your assurance. Yes. 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 It's not the steps that are your assurance. Right. It's your faith in God yes. that's your assurance. Just go with that step. Amen. And then in Hebrews chapter 11, again, just a few verses down, down to verse 13, the Amplified Classic Translation. It says these people, because it lists all these people, mm -hmm. these people all died controlled and sustained by their faith. Wow. Every man is under the control of something. It might as well be the control of faith. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. It might as well be their faith controlling them because yes. then faith will sustain them. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I so appreciate when it says that he went not knowing. Not knowing. Because that describes faith people. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're trusting God. I, I so, uh, the, there's the, t I want to give you several testimonies. Um, Amy Simple McPherson, who was a preacher, she, her ministry was on the forefront, maybe around the 1920s, 30s, 40s. Um, God told her to build Angelus Temple. 
That was the church headquarters there in Los Angeles. And she built that, she started it in 1921, finished it in 1923, paid cash for it. The largest freestanding dome in the United States at that time. Mm -hmm. It's still a, a fabulous building there in Los Angeles. She brought $5,000 to the contractor. And she said, what will $5,000 buy me? He said, that'll dig the hole. She said, you dig the hole, God will fill it up. What is that? That's not knowing language. She didn't know where the rest was going to come from, but she just moved with the part she had. Just move with the part you do have and what you need to know will come. But if you're not moving with what you do have, why do you need to know more? Amen. She was going not knowing. Everything that my husband and I started, every arm of ministry, every building that we've built, every time we started without the money. Yeah. We weren't building it by money. We were building it by faith. Yes. We didn't need to wait for money when we had the faith. Yes. And as we moved with the faith in our heart and the next step that God gave us, the money would meet the faith. Yes. Supply moves at the pace of your faith. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Notice that yeah. the supply will come mm -hmm. to match the pace of your faith. Amen. Many times people want money to show up, then they'll start moving. You start moving in faith and watch the money come. Yes. Yes. It's not money that gives us permission to move ahead. Right. It's God's word. Yes. What does he say? Right. Now, when you're going to move not knowing, you better make sure that what you're following is what God said and not what you calculated, yes. not what you figured out or formulated. You have to... The, the key to success is what's God saying to you. Yes. Know that. Amen. Yes. I, you think about it. You think about this. I was considering this the other day. Remember all the miracles that were worked to deliver the Hebrews out of Egypt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were slaves there. And all the things that were worked that worked to their exit. Mm -hmm. um, there was the night of the Passover mm -hmm. when the angel of death, not from God, See, yeah. when, don't be duped when it says angel of death because uh, devils are called angels too. They are fallen angels. Yes. Yes. It was an angel of death sent from the destroyer is what the word said. Went into the household of every Egyptian and the firstborn out of every, out, out of every Egyptian home died. Yes. Those who had the blood of the lamb on their doorpost, on their entryway, that, that angel of death from the devil from hell could not get in. Yes. So the next morning, Egyptians wake up and their firstborn are dead. Their future is their firstborn. Yes. Yes. Their future yes. is annihilated in one night. And so Pharaoh gets up, tells Moses, take the people and go, get out. Mm -hmm. They have suffered so much destruction. Listen, they could have avoided all the destruction. You know they could have avoided it? Yes. Yes. Why? They didn't do what God said. Yes. Remember what Moses, God told Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Yes. Why did he tell them that? He's telling them how to avoid destruction. Yes. If he would have yes. just let the people go, yes. their cattle wouldn't have died, their water yes. wouldn't have turned to blood, the locusts wouldn't have come, the grasshoppers wouldn't have come, the firstborn wouldn't have died. But God told them how to avoid devastation yes. and they didn't comply. Yes. So once they reached this final, this final really tragic event, Pharaoh tells Moses, get your people and go. Yes. The morning of their exit, God's, God gave them the plan. Mm -hmm. Go command of your master the silver and gold yes. out of the house. Yes. And there was such favor on God's people that they gave them all their yes. wealth, yes. their yes. silver, their gold. And they walked out that day out of Egypt, not one feeble one yes. among them. Yes. And not one poor one among them because they had the wealth of Egypt in their pockets. But notice this. They knew they were going to be exiting Egypt, but it wasn't till the morning they left that they knew the plan of how the wealth would be there. They didn't know that the night before. They didn't know that the week before. Moses was willing to, put, to lead three million Hebrews out of a city not knowing how he was going to feed them, not knowing how they would be sustained. Moses went not knowing. The, Egypt, the, the Hebrews went not knowing. And when they were willing to move into the unknown, then, then it became known. Go get the money from the neighbors, from your, from your, from your masters. Why? 400 years of back pay. With interest. With interest. <laughs> and they walked out with the wealth of Egypt. Yes. 
but then God sent them to a place where they couldn't <laughs> spend it. <laughs> Why? He's teaching them, this wealth is not your provision. I'm your provider. Yes. And they went to a wilderness where they couldn't spend, the, the money meant nothing. They couldn't buy it. What? Couldn't buy anything out there. Why? God was teaching them, I am your provider, not money. That's how come you can go ahead on what God told you to go even when the money isn't there. If you're following what God says, because when you go not knowing, the money will meet you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. They would not have received that instruction of going and collecting all the gold and silver from their masters if they had not have been up and moving ready to go yes. that morning. Amen. They were ready to move yeah. out, not knowing, yeah. not having any currency right. of their own. They were slaves. They didn't have currency yeah. saved up, yeah. but they were willing to go, not knowing. And when God saw their faith, he goes, they're not going empty handed. They're going out with the wealth of Egypt in their pockets. Amen. If people won't move, I'm talking believers. If they won't move until they can figure out and calculate everything mentally, they won't be able to keep pace with what God has for them. But we can trust God. Yes. God move, faith moves on what God says, not just on what you can figure out. Yes. That's right. Amen. Faith is based on one thing. What did God say? What did God, what did God say? say? And that's the key to success. Know what God says before you make a move. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise You're going to have to come back next time. We have so many things. That, we're only on number two. There's five things in this passage. And we're only on number two of what Paul did, the steps he took to arrive at the finish with joy. We all have a race to run yes. with joy. Yes. We have a race to finish. And we need to, we need to run it uh, joyfully, not under a burden, not troubled, yes. not harassed, not tormented, but joyfully. Amen. Yes. There is one reason that we're able to come into your homes or wherever you're watching this today is because Kenneth Copeland Ministries has sown the seed of this airtime to our ministry. It's an amazing thing. Every programmer that you see on the Victory Channel is there at this, the gracious, generous seed of Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Copeland Ministries. They're partners are part of why we're on here. Yes. I'm a partner. My ministry is a partner. Many here are partners mm -hmm. with Kenneth Copeland Ministries because we value the word of faith yes. that is coming across this channel yes. into your home, into your life, into your future. Yes. Amen. We pray, we ask you to pray that if you're not already a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries, pray about becoming one yes. because this is the kind of thing that is being um, funded to send the word all around the world. And so if you are not already a partner, please pray about it. Go to kcm.org and you can sign up for partnership there. And until we see you next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Your life will be changed as you meditate on the revelations in this book, Visitations from God by Nancy Dufresne. Order your copy now at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Dufresne Ministries Miracle Crusade in Paducah, Kentucky at World Harvest Church of Paducah, May 21st through the 25th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, and I'm the president of World Harvest Bible Training Center in Murrieta, California. One of the things that Dad Hagen would often say to us is every generation must be evangelized and taught, and that preparation time is never lost time. 
We're so grateful for the opportunity to help train the next generation. One of the things that God is doing in this era is He's training us in the Word and the Spirit. And so we are training the students in that format. It's not simply an academic approach, but a Spirit-led format. Romans chapter 1, verse 11, Paul said, For I long to see you, that I may impart some spiritual gift to the end, that you may be established. This Bible school is a catching school. You're going to receive impartations that come through teaching, through the laying on of hands, and through fellowship with those who are hungry and moving with the Word and the Spirit. The difference is the spirit of faith here. Yes. Uh, yes. It's not just the book learning. But this right here is about the spirit of faith and learning yeah. the life in that spirit of faith. Yes. After coming to the Bible school and looking back on the time that I've had here, I really see how God orchestrated things and brought me into a place where I could get the impartations that I was going to need uh, in order to move forward in my life. And even to this day, being out of Bible school now for uh, you know eight years almost, it's, it's crazy to see all the things that are still working in my life through Bible school and uh, through the relationships that I built here. Um, just because you have a family, just because you have uh, you know, things that are going on in your life already or things that maybe you're already doing, if you feel uh, any form of a lead to come to the Bible school, put the application in, make the first steps. You know, follow the peace in your heart. And if you have peace about coming, everything will come together. You just keep making the steps. You know, one of the things that I loved about the Bible school is we have so many guest ministers and so many different perspectives that come into play. And you get to learn um, all the different things that help make them successful. And you also get to learn what to watch out for. Before I joined Bible school, I was very career oriented. I was very education oriented, which are good things. However, it engrossed in my life to a point where I lost direction towards what God had in store for me. But because I went to World Harvest Bible Training Center, it brought me back to a grounded, established, um, anchored place in God's Word. And because of that, I was able to move towards what God has for me. And what God had for me was more than what I could even imagine for myself, more than what the success that I thought the world can bring me. I think for me, uh, the whole picture of Bible school is learning how to look to God and how He takes care of you because you're in His plan. It's never too late. Yeah, yes. You're never too old. <laughs> I encourage anybody that um, you're even thinking about coming to the school. If you're thinking about Bible school, don't think anymore. Just go ahead and fill out your application and submit it. You're not gonna regret it. You're gonna build relationships that last you a lifetime. The Catherine I was before Bible school is a completely different person than who I am now. So we invite you, pray about becoming part of World Harvest Bible Training Center, a place where you will receive impartations, demonstrations, and revelations. God bless you.